Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to the Culture and Cannabis Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Full Time Tony, here with my guy, JC Coates. JC, how we doing? What's good, brother? How's everything? Good, man. I got a fucking tweaked neck right now. You got a tweaked nice. elbow. I, I think I pinched a nerve. So I won't be doing a lot of like turning. I'll be yeah. looking at the camera a lot today. Okay. So, um, but we got the shades on, chains on. We're how, live how on this. How did you hurt that neck? How did, uh, how? Uh, I think it was from basketball. I was playing basketball yesterday, going very hard in the paint. <laughs> I think I think I overextended my arm, my left arm going for a rebound, and mm-hmm. then it kind of like felt a little weird, and then I slept on it a little bit, a little weird. It was a little sore this morning. Go, going hard in the paint, it's kind of a lifestyle for you. That's it's, the only way I live life. It's, 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 well, so, sometimes it comes with you know. Price of an injury here. Yeah, there, price so. of an injury, potentially some slobber on you. I don't know. Yeah, anything. It's a rough. It's a rough life. When I'm going hard in the paint, bro, just get get out of my way, honestly. Damn. So you know, I go to the gym this morning. I go do some cardio. It felt a little stiff, and then I was doing some weightlifting. Was doing some shoulders today, which mm. probably wasn't the best idea. And then I just fucking it didn't. It just like a pain shot up my neck. Back. The old, woo, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> the guy, the guy next to me for sure was like, oh, bro, that did not look good. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looked at me, just kind of shook his head a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. But, but listen, we have a great we do. podcast. There's, today. A, there's a lot happening in Nevada. Uh, too much, to, if you ask me. Um, yeah. We're having a lot going on. Um, we have, who we got today, Jason? We've got Danny and Tina from the Chamber of Cannabis with us today. How are you, ladies? We are great. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for living through that story with us. Well, we just wanted to offer um, Danny can help you with your weightlifting structure Mm -hmm. and poise. Mm. So please use her as a resource. And uh, Tina can hook you up with some old pal. So we're just a one stop shop of saving lives. We know how it is being a baller. We're we're two ballers out here doing stuff like that. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Literally, just the, you know, the complete remedy. I need to fix a pinched nerve. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Old pal and physique training. So. <laughs> and, uh, total recomposition training. Yeah. All right. But listen, we got some talking to do, guys. We got some we got some explaining to do, guys. But what is going on? What's going on? I don't so, know. Mitch, so many good things. So many good things. There's a lot of justice going on. There's a lot of reforming cannabis bills. There's a lot of uniting of people in the industry who have been putting in the work. Um, So two big, huge historic moments for Nevada. Governor Governor Sisolak signed AB 341, our Consumption Lounge Legalization Bill, and AB 400 on Friday, June 4th, which happened to be my 29th birthday. So (laughs) it was serendipitous to say the least. Um, And both bills were such a long time coming. So there's so many people that are just, you know, so stoked for this and a huge win for Nevada. Wow. You said yes. you said 29th birthday? I said what I said. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just, I was just wondering. Tone, what's, you're like 25 yeah. with a kink neck. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you got a dog in the fight, homie. <laughs> yeah. So what one. does that mean, though, yeah. right? It sounds really fancy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Who, 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 does so, it, who does it benefit? So Tina? we'll break it down first. Um, I want to talk about the consumption lounge first and then the DUI law. It's a little sexier, the consumption lounge bill, but the DUI law affects all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so in a nutshell, this license type will go go to independent lounges and retailers. For the retailers, it will be one license per license group, uh, and they will be able to have it adjacent to their dispensary. Uh, Many will probably get up first. They have build outs already. Obviously, they have the plans. So it's a big win for dispensaries um, and for folks that go to dispensaries and walk out and say, hey, where should we consume? Um, The second license type is for all of us that don't already have a license, Um, and there is going to be 20 of those to start, 10 that are for social equity and diversity applicants, and 10 that are for everybody else. Uh, To get in, it will only be $10,000 for an independent license and $2,500 for those social equity applicants, so very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Um, For dispensaries, it will be $100,000 and just the first round, and then it will be $10,000 every year after that. So if I want to try to get one of the uh, 10 or 20 licenses yes. um, 
it's going, uh, based on my situation, it's going to cost me at least $2,500 and possibly up to $10,000 just to apply. Is that correct? Uh, well, only if, you, so the social equity definition is still being built out by the CCB. We'll be having workshops for that where people can put their input. Starting in July. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you are that applicant, you will pay a 75% reduction of the $10,000, which is $2,500. Okay. That is to apply. You do not get that money back. It will be a lottery-based system. System, which is different than last time. Previously, it was a merit-based system, which obviously caused tons of lawsuits, um, and they're not going to do that again. Um, let's say you don't get pulled for one of those licenses. There is still tremendous opportunity for partnerships. Um, we've had conversations with some major restaurateurs and chef. this bill, chefs. This bill does include infused food and include uh, includes infused drinks. Um, so people are thinking big, players want to get involved that we don't even know who they are. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities for partnerships. And yeah, revenue shares, management contracts, things like that. Just because there's a few amount of licenses doesn't mean that you can't play. And those licenses will go up. So as more retailers open up their lounges, then more independent lounges. Really how the ratio works is 25% licenses for social equity and diversity applicants, 25% for everybody else mm -hmm. of all of the licenses. So it just will keep growing. Nice. Let's, let's talk about that really quick. So. Um, I mean, it's obviously a huge win for the consumer, right? It's obviously a huge win for the retailer. Uh, small businesses, yeah, there's some opportunity for some partnerships and yeah, there's some opportunity if you have $10,000 to, to apply. But, um, you know, it might not seem like it's super beneficial to the small business owner. Um, let's talk about how, like, in the future, are they going to open up more licenses? Like, it's not the end all be all, right? No. Just these 20. So, let's yeah. talk about what the future holds it, and how it's going to get laid out. I mean, really think of it like this is our first step in the next step in commerce. So we have a long road ahead of us, but this is the first step. To, so to start with 20 independent licenses, it absolutely gives so many small businesses and small business owners an opportunity to be involved. Whether you're the lounge owner, you're an ancillary business, you're a chef, you're a restaurateur. Um, I mean, we have so many entrepreneurs and you know just folks that think of incredible ideas here in Vegas, and that opens the door. So that's what we needed to do on this bill. We needed to open the door. Mm -hmm. Our legislator meets every two years. Hopefully in two years, we can talk about micro businesses and we just keep getting better at a sustainable pace mm -hmm. so that everybody could have a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just a reminder, this was the third time it's come into play. So mm -hmm. it has been a work in progress. There's been a lot of kinks worked out. And like Tina said, <coughs> it's not everything we wanted and no, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, just an open door so that everyone can play. But I think the people that do get to play so long as we behave well um, and show them the opportunities for Vegas, for uh, our economy and for the cannabis industry, I think uh, they'll see the value and open them up open up more in the next legislative session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely, I, you know, it's such, it's such a, pro, you know, massive progress from where we were in 2017 when this first even was an idea um, to go talk at the city of Las Vegas about lounges. And then in 2019, when we thought it was going to pass and now, you know, 2021, now it's passing. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's great. I just think that, um, you know, everyone, anyone that's ever, you know, that's watched the podcast or has seen my comments on the chamber of cannabis, um, understands how I feel about it. Uh, I think on a macro level, it's the best thing that's ever happened to, not the best thing, but one of the, one of the better things that's happened to Nevada cannabis on a micro level though, uh, there is some unfortunate parts of it. And I think those things should be talked about so that in two years, when we do go talk about how we, we can improve the cannabis industry, the, the cannabis industry, we know what we're, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think those things are, you know, so as an independent owner, you have to buy your product from a cannabis, uh, a dispensary, not from a wholesaler like yourself or mm -hmm. from Danny or mm -hmm. like from me or GC, JC. And I think that gives a massive advantage to an already leveraged group, which are dispensaries who already kind of have brands and the consumers bent over the barrel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think, you know, I think, um, and so like when I make comments 
on posts or when I say things out loud, it's not to criticize anybody. It's mm. just talking about what could have been better. Yeah, it's really talking about the politics, right, of how a laws are made. Mm -hmm. And when we put in the initial draft and we gave it to Assemblyman Steve Yeager um, in December of 2020, we absolutely hoped for uh, an open market where the lounges could pick whoever they wanted to do business with, whether that's a cultivation, a production, or a dispensary, just like a restaurant has the ability to pick. Um, unfortunately, uh, politics doesn't always work like that. And people that are powerful and that have a lot of connections, um, they have the ability to negotiate a little bit harder. And that is exactly what the case is. So that's where we encourage people to become more involved and put their two cents in when we are having these conversations. We posted so many uh, announcements about calling your legislator and coming to our meetings. And if you didn't do that, you can still have your opinion now, but prior was the time you really wanted to have your opinion and that's when it was supposed to be heard. So everyone's learning this process. We're gonna to continue to get better, build our coalition of people. And then in two years again, hopefully we take another big step forward in cannabis commerce. Right, because it never stops, right? It's just, you Hell know, it's no. been going on like generations before us and it'll be going on generations after us right um what, what else what else is on your mind tony like what, what are some of the main things that kind of that you think we can work on in the future as 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 the session rolls around again that we can do to improve this situation as, as far as the lounges go yeah for like small business owners. yeah I, the, I get you know obviously the amount right i i feel like you know going back to what tina said politics is politics so it's all about negotiating mm -hmm. so tina rolls up with tina and the chamber of cannabis and um Steve, uh, is it Steve? Scott, 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 Scott Rutledge, uh, Steve Yeager, I saw I get myself. Scott Rutledge roll up with their, like, you know, their wish list, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, like, hey, this is the perfect world. This is what I, this is what we want. Yeah, exactly. And, and then they submit that, and then, you know, there's negotiations group, happen. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. there's groups like, um, you know, like the NDA who go, mm -hmm. well, you know, we just want to make sure that the dispensaries have more mm -hmm. leverage when it comes to, um, because getting these lodges. And from an empathy standpoint, a lot of the dispensaries have been in a rough place, right? So it's almost like, here you go, right? Here, here's. Well, I don't know. No, I, I don't think that's accurate. Dispensaries aren't in a rough place. We sold 30% more in 2020 than we did in 2019. It was like. $600 million or something mm. crazy I just saw. So the dispensaries aren't in a hard place. The dispensaries do feel that they've spent a lot of money and that they should be the ones. Now they're gonna deliver and facilitate this entire mm -hmm. process. There will be price gouging regulations put in place mm -hmm. and they will have to um, be very competitive because we have tons of dispensaries. Mm -hmm. So you're also gonna be producing more products that are for cooking and baking. Uh, the cooking and baking was a big, huge win, especially with how many can of chefs are out there. I think we all mm -hmm. know at least five um, who are not working in the cultivations and productions right now mm -hmm. so that those are wins the other big win that we got was only one license per license group and mm -hmm. chairman Yeager said this best the folks that got more sorry you're not getting more again so that keeps mm -hmm. the equity in the market so small businesses like yours if you do get a license you have a chance to get those customers and mm -hmm. go into the arts district and you know get a good location. Yeah, I just think there's a very fine line when it comes to like like for example like a price gouging regulation. It's a very fine line because it's like while yeah in theory it's nice that i don't want a dispensary to gouge these independent lounges but at the same time if i was a dispensary owner i don't want any government entity telling me how what i can price my product at if planet 13 wants to sell you know triple to lounges and that's what the market goes for well that's that's just like the way the game's played right well you might not want a government entity telling you that but with a privileged license that's what's going to happen so you know yeah but in any other privileged license like gaming or alcohol, they don't say, hey, Budweiser, you, hey, you can't charge the consumer more than five bucks for a six ounce, you know, of, yeah. of, of beer, right? Sure. So, and so to to do that to a wholesaler, like, um, and, and so I guess- oh, well, goes, we, We're speaking hypothetically, we don't even know what those are. Of course. Um, so I don't want to get the cart before the horse. Yeah. And this and so, is like people like us, Tony, that's who needs to be at those workshops. That's who needs to be putting in the input. Um, and they're going to start in July. So that's where we need people to say, I have some great solutions and ideas, and I can put them forth professionally and respectfully because 
boom, then maybe they'll happen. Yeah, I guess I guess my biggest question is is can I just like can anyone give me an example of how an independent lounge can win in this market? I guess that's like my like I yes. keep on going back to this great. idea. Yes, great idea. And I just like how how does how does how does a lounge an independent lounge win? Okay, so think of any business that exists today that's successful. Um, let's take Cirque du Soleil's and dinner shows here. Successful entertainment that brings in millions of dollars. Imagine just putting cannabis with any successful business on top of it. Now you're going to have more success you are going to spend more money and pay more at a social use venue, just like you do at a bar. That is a fact. But there's also a way to keep it a good ratio where people feel like, yeah, I can afford that. I mean, Tone, we pay $19 for a cocktail here in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. And some t people might say, well, I would never pay that. Well, guess what? Thousands do. Mm -hmm. But again, that's where people like us who have the ideas and are passionate, we are getting an invite from the CCB to have a seat at the table and we need to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess I just keep going back to like, okay, so like the circus delay with the fine dining model is super dope and, and, and it will get accomplished, right? But what happens when dispensaries pull off that model? Well, we have 50 million tourists here in a huge city, so Do, there's definitely so, so, going. <laughs> so let's just, but let's just say there's for definitely. Let's just say, for example, um, dispensary X gets a fine dining um, concept, yeah, and independent independent uh, consumption lounge owner X gets a fine dining concept as well, yeah. Automatically, the pricing at an independent lounge is going to be incrementally a lot more than a dispensary. And there's multiple reasons why. One being that dispensaries will have a way bigger budget to buy said product for their lounge. And two, because the, you know, if, if anyone who's ever sold legal weed or illegal weed knows that the more hands that touch it, the more expensive it gets to the end consumer, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, me and JC go sell a pound of flour to a dispensary for $2,500, they go, well, that pound now gets broken down to grams, right? And a gram in a dispensary is anywhere between 10 and 15 bucks, yeah. right? It, they, they're going to get that regardless of their dis dispensary. So they're going to have to sell it to the, the consumption lounge yeah. around that same price. They're, they still have to make a margin on the consumption lounge. So you're talking about a $20 gram at a uh, independent lounge compared to a $10 gram at a dispensary. Lounge. It'd be almost like saying you're talking about a thousand dollar bottle at a, a club versus a $40 bottle at a restaurant or a supermarket. Yeah, but I, the, the only difference though, is that like Hawkesan is inside Mandalay Bay and the independent lounge is by itself. And it sure is. There's so many hypotheticals again, that we could go on and on all Hawk day about on. what if this, Hawk what if that. Hawkinson's on Mandalay Bay, by the way. Where are Hawkinson at? <laughs> and who cares? <laughs> death, death to the mega club. Sorry, mega club, you're out. MGM. Consumption lounges MGM. are in. MGM. MGM, that's right. You know, we do. I guess I, 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 I'd say this tone for you to to have a good peace of mind that we're we're going in the right direction. Nobody has all the answers. Not you. Not me. Not the CCB. Yeah. Right. But at least when you put the best minds together, you will come with a compromise, which is what this is. And if Amsterdam can do it, why not us? We lead the country in everything else: tourism, hospitality, adult entertainment, dining. I mean, if you told somebody 20 years ago, do you know that people will pay a thousand dollars for a bottle to sit and stare at their phone and each other like what and now here we are no and i think i think um i think uh, thank god for tiesto yeah thank i mean thank god for tiesto <laughs> if he did if tiesto wasn't coming back to vegas i don't know what would happen well and this kind of speaks to your model right um if people will pay it then you as a business should be able to charge that mm -hmm. yeah right? no so that's mm -hmm. that, yeah coming full full circle no and i guess and i it. guess like yeah our independent lounge is going to win of course there's going to be people that are inventive in in the market that are going to be able to come up with something that a dispensary is not good at doing or they just do it a lot better right mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and then going back to even, I, I think people people think when I say these things that I'm talking about myself, like I'm not worried at all about the lounges coming. Like I, like in any situation, culture and cannabis, and I'm just not to be cocky, is set up 
to to be in these lounges, right? Whether that's with a dispensary partnership mm -hmm. or getting our own. Yeah. So like, yeah, let's so see. I'm not, I'm not concerned for my group because my group has been positioned for the past six years to be in, to, to literally do this exact thing. Mm -hmm. But so, my, my issue is, is that you're going to have a lot of people who, especially social equity, which I guess is my point, mm -hmm. that are not going to be that are not going to be able to compete with dispensaries. And it's like, it's like, why do you think they're not going to be able to compete? You think like their idea won't be as great. It, you have to look at it like this. Look at a successful small restaurant, like Esther's in the arts district, always packed, yes, super small, 100%. right? I love Esther's. Do they compete with a hell's kitchen in front of Caesar's palace? Yeah. Well, yes. No, they yeah. do not compete. And, no, well, absolutely not. Okay. They are they're not so competitors. He, yes. There's, there's two different restaurants, two different business models. People may go to both. It could be the yes. similar demographic. No, you're completely right. Both places are packed out all the time. We're talking about 20 independent lounges to start and probably there'll be 20 retailers who want to start. Look at the line at Nuwu. You couldn't even get in there to get a chair. And people were paying $20 a gram. So again, I think with the right input, um, like we're going to make it work. Yeah. And the I people just... that are entrepreneurs, this is the other thing, is by essentially only having 20 to start with, you are making them more valuable. So folks that get a license will hopefully be able to attain investors and different funding so that they can get these up and running quickly. Um, but if it's not for you, like maybe it's not for you. You could do a management agreement too. Let's say a dispensary doesn't want to open one. They want to partner with culture and cannabis for the cafe. Um, so all types of different partnerships yeah. and all commerce that didn't exist before today. I think the only thing that's the issue with the analogy of Hell's Kitchen and Esther's Kitchen is that Esther's doesn't have to go buy their meats from Hell's Kitchen. And I think that's where my disconnect's at. Because yeah, like, yeah, it sucks. I could, it yeah, fucking it, sucks. And so I guess, yeah. I <laughs> like, what else can we say? No, it there, sucks. there's nothing that we can say. I guess I, I am just um, not nervous because people were going to, you know, they'll be successful anyways. But I just think about that inherent disadvantage. And right remember, this can be changed. Like, this. Oh, it can. all of this, it can. if it this can lasts for two years and it does not go well, we're changing it in two years and you can best believe the chamber will be at the front of that campaign uh, And I 100% believe that. It's just like, um, this is a very complex bill and this is a very complex situation just because this is all brand new. And so like to compare it to what AB, AB 400, which I definitely want to talk about because it's super important. AB 400 went into place back in 2017 when cannabis came legalized. It took three sessions, six years oh, to you, get- Sorry, you mean 341? AB 400? No, it's that's cannabis DUI. DUI. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. I'm saying that to get anything changed is not easy. And so to get something changed in a very complex bill like AB 341, which is a, a cannabis consumption bill, which to a regulator, a regulator would be like, who gives a fuck if they buy of no. independent no. buys from dispensary or from a wholesaler? It's, uh, they don't actually. Um, to clarify, we've had many conversations with the CCB and Scott Rutledge uh, talks to Tyler uh, at least once a day through this process. Um, and the CCB absolutely knows its role is to make sure that this is regulated correctly. They did not make that law, but if it is not done well, um, it will not happen. And yes, it's not easy, but when you have the right people in place like we did on this campaign, then you can get the job done. Yeah, I guess I just the idea of getting the job done and the idea of it being set up in a way that is conducive, I guess, is where I come back to. Right. And I and with this, once again, it's not like harping on anybody. I think yeah. the, the uh, you know, to discredit anyone's work over the past six years to get cannabis lounges and cannabis into Nevada is it would be stupid to say, right? So like any legislative work done is a massive success because if anyone that's ever been somewhat involved with Nevada politics know how ass backward it is for the most part. Yeah. And the fact that we have um, assembly every two years is like historic, right? Like it's we weird. have people moving in by the, the truckloads to Nevada and the fact that we have um, an assembly every, every two years is ridiculous. Hopefully this is what will happen is the chamber will get as powerful and influential as the Nevada Dispensary Association. And we don't have to go up and negotiate too hard because we have that influence. No, hundred percent. And so, and so I guess, uh, to end this on a good note, not to say that I'm against it is that I, I, I'm excited to see the P the, the 20 
individuals and groups that receive these independent licenses and see how they can creatively um, be competitive in the market and see how they stand out. Because I just can't wait to see like who those people are and how we can work with them. Yeah, hell yeah. I think it's going to be super dope. And thank you guys for being a Gold Chamber member, always supporting from the jump, encouragement, rooting, posting. You guys have been an awesome support. Of course, of course. Yeah. We, we, we appreciate you. We believe in y'all too. Yo, yeah, I, we, yeah. Uh, so, and so let's talk about yeah. AB400. Yes. So in a nutshell, AB400 removes the per se or the blood test of metabolites and nanograms so that most people will not be affected. However, if it was a fatality or severe injury, um, you could absolutely have your blood taken. Um, also, anybody that's a CDL driver, this does not apply to you. So uh, a big win uh, for justice, making sure that we are not convicting people who are not guilty of driving driving impaired um, and really ruining our lives so we can't even get to and from work you know you can yeah. get your license taken away yeah. yeah and so the bill as it was before just for people that just realize how like dumb it was it was two nanograms had it to be shown in your system to be considered DUI yeah. um, for cannabis and tox is it toxation, yeah. right? Is that the right? right? Intubation, intoxication, yeah. 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 Whatever they called it. Um, and so now it, that that's been taken away. Mm -hmm. um, so so that so for example, like a police officer pulls you over, he, they um, before this bill, they suspect you of being um, high. Mm -hmm. um, they then can then say, "Yo, I'm you know we're gonna bring you down to get a drug test to see if." Um, I mean, a blood test. They would then give you a field sobriety test. So mm -hmm. just like prescription drugs, mm -hmm. um, a field sobriety test. They obviously did pull you over for a reason. You were speeding, you were swerving, you were texting, whatever you were doing. Um, so act normal. <laughs> and if they make you do a sobriety test, then show them that you're sober. Um, but if you fail that sobriety test, then consequences could happen. Is, is the sobriety test for weed different than it is for alcohol? Oh, that's exactly what I was just gonna speak oh, on. Okay. Um, one thing during the, the different um, tests, the different hearings is they wanna make sure that these officers have these trainings. Mm -hmm. um, so for them to support the bill, they had to make sure that it's a little bit more intensive, mm -hmm. um, but we're not entirely sure how that's going to work, but they mm -hmm. are going to bring in experts so that it's still judged as justly as they can. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, to, to to leave it up to you know a police officer to tell you if I'm I'm stoned or not. Yeah, <laughs> when, when I'm not. No, in it, stone, inebriated. Um, right. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's and it, well, I think what's so funny to me is that like two nanograms in your system is like nothing. Parts per billion. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about like someone who smoked a couple, even a you couple know, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. maybe even right. a week ago that ha might have two nanograms in their system. Funny story. I actually was talking to a homie telling him about this and he was like, listen, I was in jail for 95 days and I tested positive every single time and I hadn't smoked for 95 days. Wow. Uh, so it, it, you know, every person's going to be different and it's really not, si there is no scientific way at this moment to measure uh, cannabis intoxication at that moment. Yeah, and so that's such a massive win for consumers here in Nevada, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, to know that, like, um, I'm not going to get fucked b because I smoked weed a couple of days ago or smoked weed the night before and I have to go to work today and I get pulled over because maybe I didn't use my blinker accidentally, right? Or I make mm -hmm. a simple uh, traffic, mis traffic mistake. That is a huge win. I, I don't even think a lot of people knew about it. No. Which is crazy, no. right? No. Um, and it's scary, too, it's to think about scary. it. Like, um, I think I've, I've shared this story last time. My friend had a seizure. And because she was coming out of a seizure, brain fog, they were like, oh, you're high. Um, so they took her blood. She was not high. She was coming home from work, having a medical emergency, and they charged her with the cannabis DUI because of the law. So that's oh. another person um, harmed by the failed war on drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know it's, I've talked about it before. It's, you know, nothing's ever perfect, right? It's a process, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and we're all working towards that. And I think it's important, the important points that I brought up and that Tony brought up, right? So we just have the conversation, right? Um, but I, you know, it's best to take Tina's advice and, and, and use your opinions in a timely manner. Right. Um, yes. but yeah, so, so what else is going on? What else? We got a big celebration tonight down at 18 bin from seven to nine 30. Uh, it is a new moon in Gemini. Um, so all kinds of a great time to set new intentions and have a fresh start. We're celebrating our legislative efforts and really so many people in the Nevada cannabis space coming together to make this happen. So we have a reggae band, DJ Kelly J, food, drinks. Uh, tickets are $30 for members, $40 for non. We hope to see you gentlemen there. Nice. 
Nice. What do you get? Some drinks or do you get a drink ticket? Yes. Or yep. You what? get a drink, a sangria, or a beer. Ooh. And there's a bunch of different food. And then if you want to buy a thirty dollar all you can drink wristband, that's an option too. Oh. Oh. I mean, we're just uh, it's gonna get crazy. Oh. Oh. You talk oh. about going hard in the paint tone. Yeah. You haven't seen hard in the paint until you've seen a chamber <laughs> celebration. Uh, okay. Nice. So is that what this is? Is it, are we celebrating the moon? Are we celebrating yes, just, every, yes. just the moon? So or? yes. So it's ironic because because today is June 10th and the governor had 10 days to sign the bill from June 1st. Mm -hmm. So we knew we would know if the bill was signed and our meeting just happened to fall on that day. So it was all very coincidental and it must be the Gemini moon. And, Jim and, I'm in. Jim and he, fu he fucked it all up by signing it by like day two. Nope, day nope. It was my birthday. So we are okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> we'll allow it. <laughs> but yeah, and also coming out of a crazy ass year, like we can all agree, like, I mean, yes, the the world around us was crazy, but also in cannabis, we had to be so inventive, so dynamic, pivot, sell more than we've ever sold. Mm -hmm. um, like we all deserve a hug and maybe, maybe a drink, maybe a smoke, whatever your flavor is. So. <laughs> go, go down there and get crossfaded. Yeah, eight, 18 mm -hmm. bin, mm -hmm. turn up. Don't drive high. Don't drive high. Don't drive high. Don't, don't drive, you do it. Don't, don't do drive it. high. A lot of people think it's cool to like do the smoking in the car. Off don't. The car. Responsible adult mm -hmm. use. Like, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've done it before. I've been doing yeah. it. I literally and, and, did it before. And, and, hey. <laughs> we can always keep getting better. Yep. Yeah. I wasn't driving when I was smoking. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in my car smoking and then I Kate walked in here. Mm -hmm. And then did an hour long podcast and now I'm going to get in my car and go. Alrighty. Home. I, I usually have a driver, so I just do it in the right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. JC's big time now. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's one of his kids who just got a license. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm 16 years. <laughs> and plans working perfectly. Uh, shit. Well, well, damn. well, thank you for coming on, ladies. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, uh, thank you for all the hard work you guys did this past uh, year. Um, and shout out to anyone who's ever worked on Nevada legislative. You know, yeah. I, I feel like um, while the Chamber of Cannabis had a very, very um, massive input to these bills, Kath, to shout out all the people in the past that have done it before, yeah, too. Absolutely. So, takes yeah. a village, right? Yeah, yeah. dude, it takes a we village. We didn't start it. We just yeah. took it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took it across you, the finish line. Yeah, which is so sick. So, yeah, so we, we, we get to protect participate in all this because of what people have done before us you yeah know what i mean so that's a privilege yeah so. super privilege so um, well shit i think that's the podcast that is a podcast man i'm gonna i might go down to the ATM bit? I mean, is it a full moon? Is it a yes? I mean, oh God, good vibes everywhere. So kinda, it sounds kind of witchy. I don't it, know. Uh, I mean, kind of sounds lit. Can you get a tarot yeah. reading tarot about your future. Oh, yeah. Okay, now you're scared. Yes, are, you are, you are, do they have massages there? Like a masseuse therapist? You think or um, like we could probably some, find some people some that might be interested. Yeah. or something. I don't know. Now but. you guys are kind of freaking out. All right. Well, that's the podcast. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks, JC, for always showing up being here just looking the best um people want to know when you're going to start bringing the no sleeves back because we, we might you talk so much shit about how you're like i'm just never going to wear sleeves yeah. again and i'm just like i'm just going to be mr sleeveless yeah. all the time fucking <laughs> i just had such so yeah, literally the words i said i had so much fun going sleeveless like who says that i mean you know it is fun you know i mean you know God, ridiculous listen you know it's it's I'm, what he does. I'm, I'm would, basking in the hard work that I'd I've subscribe to that podcast in, you know? for sure. <laughs> what, what, what podcast? Sleeve 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 no shirt. We, we, might, have an, no, whoa, whoa, we no might have sleeves. an event where no I, I pick out like you know three to five of my favorite shirts and just you know rip the sleeves off one by one, try try them on, you know, make some content out of it live. Ma maybe we could do it live. I don't know. I don't know if people yeah. want to see that. Let's do it tonight. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you, you obviously want to see it. You keep talking about well, it. Well, fuck, dude. I mean, you're yeah. just talking all this fucking big I game. mean, have you seen the delts lately? You've been no. talking this big fucking game about not wearing sleeves all the time. And you, all I've been seeing you is you in sleeves. I think Tony's jealous. I mean, shit. I mean, fucking show him off then. If, I, if you think I'm jealous, I mean, what the fuck? I might show him off at the full moon uh, all right. yeah. tarot, tarot card play. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> All right, Let's we gotta go, Tony. Let's get out of here, Tony. Okay, take us home. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure to follow Tina at your old pal Tina. Uh, Danny, it's like Gyp the Gypsy Sorceress. G the Gypsy Sorceress. Uh, check out the Chamber of Cannabis at the Chamber of Cannabis. And that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.